with all my friends. Come along with me, see how the story ends. This episode is brought to you by TestKitPlus.com. We all know how important it is to prioritize your health and well-being, especially when it comes to recreational activities. That's why we want to tell you about our buddies over there. They can be your go-to resource for high-quality, easy-to-use recreational test kits. Whether you're planning a weekend getaway, attending a music festival, or just having a good time with your friends, it's really important to make sure you know what you're putting into your body. So head on over to testkitplus.com forward slash professional hippies. That way you can be sure you're safe and you have the peace of mind of what you're putting in your body. They have test kits designed to detect a wide range of substances, providing accurate and reliable results in the comfort of your own home. Knowledge is power, so don't leave anything to chance. Again, that's testkitplus.com forward slash professional hippies. This episode is brought to you by North Spore. Ever wondered what secrets lie beneath the forest floor? What if I told you there's a hidden kingdom waiting to be explored right in your own home? North Spore is your getaway to this magical world. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned mycologist, North Spore has everything you need to cultivate culinary delights, medicinal powerhouses, and even a little mind-expanding magic. Unlock the power of fungi with their top-notch spawn, easy-to-use kits, and a treasure trove of knowledge. If you're ready to embark on your mushroom journey, visit NorthSpore.com and discover a community of passionate growers, expert resources, and endless possibilities. It's time to tap into the ancient wisdom of fungi and transform your world. Be sure to use code Professional Hippies for a very special discount to fuel your fungal exploration. North Spore, where wonder grows. <laughs> Where's the edge? By I'm Professional edge. Hippies. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> welcome back. We missed you. We're the Professional Hippies. I'm Colton. <laughs> this is Dylan, aka Hippie. Hey, uh, so this week uh, we we want to really field what you would write about if you were us and you wanted to write a book what would you write that book on who would you write that book to do you write books to people is that a thing are you writing to people or are you writing it for yourself which one is it? you know well like that's the weird thing too when they say like speak to the camera and you know how sometimes it's like Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to like and subscribe, smash, you know, all the things that we ask you guys to do. Um, (laughs) They say instead of talking to the ether, it serves you a bit better if you speak like you're speaking to a friend. To which I think that's horrible advice, because if I spoke to people, yeah, if I spoke to people (laughs) the way I speak to you, I mean, they would. Oh, I have. They would be offended immediately, especially if I talk to you. People would what a lose pendulum it is too when you communicate with friends. It's like like your boys. It's one spectrum or the other. I am pretty sure I've tried to call your name at a music festival and you didn't <laughs> hear me. And I went, "Hey, you piece of shit!" And you turned around and he was like, "That's my boy. He gets it." <laughs> it's either arm across shoulders, like man, I love you, bro. I love you too, dude. You're amazing. Or hey, fuck up. Give me a drink. That's not how you use a shovel. <laughs> Put it down. <laughs> or a vacuum. Set and setting. Or... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, and how long is your book? You know, are you going to go? Do we go long? Do we go encyclopedia? Have you heard of the book? Who moved my cheese? Go? You heard of that book? Uh-uh. Oh, it's goody. It's goody. It's oldie. It's like one of those. How about The Alchemist? Heard of that one? I've heard of it. I haven't read it. Uh, that's like, honestly, it. that's like one of my, that might be my favorite book of all time. Supposedly, you're supposed to read that book a couple times throughout your life because it means it's like one of those, um, what would the term be like, is parable? Where it, like there's a moral to the story that is like clearly you can take out of context from the story itself and apply it to your life type of deal. Um, so those, that book, it, it's a quick read. I think you can read in a couple of hours, maybe like three, we'll four do, hours. We should. We should do one a chapter on each of the Ten Command each of our Ten Commandments of tripping. And then at the end of it the, the twist is uh but just in the end, butterflies and rainbows. Just don't forget that. <laughs> Sign off. I've, I tell you what, <laughs> butterflies and rainbows have got me through some stuff. That, hey, it it's a it's an easy like thing you can say to get yourself <laughs> out of some funky, funky stuff. 
<laughs> and like, it's a thing you could tell other people. How did I end up in this corner of my inner universe? I need to get the fuck out of here. Hey, hey. <laughs> Forgot you were over there. We're going to go this way now. I don't know when this, the worms decided to crawl up my skin, but I'm not really <laughs> appreciating this moment in the journey. <laughs> Can y'all make cocoons and get on flyway? That'd be great. <laughs> I don't know who I was talking to the other day. Oh, we were at brunch and uh, they were asking about my ayahuasca experience. And I was like, yeah, I mean, at some point you just look down and yeah, there's worms under your skin. And everybody was kind of bug eyed looking at me. I was like, no, but I mean, it's okay because then you realize you're on the forest floor. The worms are part of the earth. You're a part of the earth. This is whole beginning recycling. You're dying. Life. You've now become part of the earth and. Yeah. You've decayed and but it's only after you... you let go. If you fight the whole death thing, then the ayahuasca is like, hey, this is fun for me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more dramatic. Like, picture. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> an organ. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, worms under the skin are cool. You know, like, not my favorite thing. Or uh, a DMT experience where crows were picking my intestines out of my belly button not a, a huge fan of that yeah the first time wasn't the first time but one of the times I, I had bought like dumb young and dumb in college you know i bought something from somebody in the club what she think is gonna be the feel-good molly shit or whatever i took it they're promising <laughs> you a good time as long as you get something from that time I just, remember, I just remember going up to my buddy and his girlfriend and i was like i just want to let you know i'm having a very very bad time right now <laughs> i'm not going to freak out on you but I would like to leave this club pretty quickly. <laughs> and they were like, oh, okay. So we go across the, we go across to the pizza shop at Ebor and uh, we just go sit down there. And I'm like, I think a pizza would probably be good. Just get that in my system. And I'm sitting down like hands on the table like this, just like, you know, bug eyes Ripping. there. And they're like, so what's going on? And I was like, remember that thing from the mummy, all those little bug critters crawling all over, all into you? And I was like, that's all over me right now. <laughs> like they are up, down, around, on the table. I don't know what is happening right now. <laughs> They're like, what? And I was like, I, I know it's not real somewhere in my world. And that's the only thing that's gripping me right now. <laughs> They're like, All right, man. <laughs> and they took the same thing you took? Uh, I think my buddy did. Yeah. I just, whatever, my body just did not acclimate to whatever that was. I've seen people get caught in weird loops where you took the exact same thing and then you're wondering, how are you seeing that or experiencing this? That happened there's... with uh, with my buddy um, and I. We both took shrooms, the same shrooms, but he, I, I, he ended up having no feeling. He didn't have any reaction what to, whatsoever. And then I ended up having a negative trip and coming out of it. And I was just like, what was that about? You know, like that we both had <laughs> completely opposite. Who do I write a letter to? I mean, is there a <laughs> need to file a Yelp or something? Is there customer Get service that. for this experience? <laughs> call the customer service while tripping. <laughs> 1-800-GOD. You call Norspor. Like, I <laughs> like, like, sir, I that's out of our control. I don't need to call a test kit because I, I know I, I I tested it. I tested it. I was the test kit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect segue for the weekend because that's a similar thing that happened to me. Is like I went out. Um, I just felt like I needed to clear the cobwebs, so to speak. So went out, um, played some ultimate, and then after that, I was like, "Hey, there's a cool park nearby." And if I was having, if I was going to have the clarifying experience I wanted, once I got to that park and saw all of the children and people having a very pleasant Saturday. I was like, God, I don't want them seeing me and thinking I, I don't want what I'm having. So I'm going to go to a different park. <laughs> and I drove across town to, uh, there's like this river and there's an island in the middle of the river, which is pretty cool. So you can like kind of drive into the middle <laughs> of it park. Sorry, I'm laughing. You're like, I don't want to ruin their time if my time goes ruined. <laughs> No, no, I was anticipating I was going to have a great time and that would ruin their time, in which case they would ruin set time for me, if that makes sense. Mm, I see, yeah, okay. Right. So yeah. get to the island, find my own spot near the river, set up my Inu, set up my canvas, you know, uh, I'm, I'm all set up. I'm ready. I'm groovy. And uh, 
split the universe, as they say, Kid Cudi. Um, shout out, old homie there. Nothing happened. You know, I'm sitting there wow. and nothing. I mean, I expected the real weight of my existence to come bearing down on my shoulders at any moment. And I brought a canvas to paint. <clears throat> it had already been painted on, so I just painted it black, as you do. So it was kind of um, symbolic in a way, marching out of the woods with a black canvas and nothing to show for it, really. <laughs> <laughs> I sat there for about 10, 15 minutes and uh, was like... You know what? Mother Nature came down and saw the black canvas and was like, I don't need to do anything here, man. You're on your own. Butterflies <laughs> and fucking rainbows, dude. Like, hey, dude, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you set the space. I ain't coming in there. Yeah. I mean, in, in retrospect, because um, I've heard of that happening for, for people. I mean, it's not an uncommon type of thing, right? Um, do you so, think you were like, were you tired and you went out or like, did you this one? Like, I'm going to chalk up to like a woo spiritual block of sorts as if I was leaning on something external to provide an internal solution. And this could be mother's nature way of saying like, Hey, everything you need is within you. Like, don't try and lean on external supports, work through what you got to work through. Were they? Could they be own. dry? Like they just not because I've just out of whim a long time ago, we took we bought the only time we could find mushrooms, my buddy and I, we were gonna go to Bush Gardens. And these have been in this guy's car for like six months, <laughs> you know, and that was the only thing we were gonna find. We're like, whatever, sure. And I think we both took probably a one point five. Not a lot, but we both took one point five, but we didn't feel anything while we were out there. Well, so, what was I weird is I asked a friend of mine at brunch that had the exact same ones and he had taken them recently and he was like oh no those those still work for sure he was like maybe not mm. as much but um yeah i don't know i'm mm. not sure i wonder if yeah i wonder if there's a uh, there's got to be some sort of chemistry relation there when that's happening for that i mean habit. logically that's where you go right but um what if it's just like you ate some sort of fruit and that fruit just like chemical compound throws everything off. I mean, yeah, because it, it, there was like a microdose experience going on, but nothing. I mean, it, the amount that I took, like it, I, I shouldn't have been able to decide an hour later, like, okay, I'm going to go get some pizza and watch some football. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, all right, this is, I sat there for about 10, 15 minutes, journaled on it a little bit and was like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm going to go do something else with my day now. (laughs) This is not how I plan my day at all. I I know. I mean, what do you do? (laughs) Suddenly that much time frees up. I was like, okay, so I'm going to do something else, I guess. I don't know. Man, what if you went, what if you went out and you were, (laughs) if you just went out, you ran into a. An old, a buddy or something, and then it just kicks in right there. Imagine, <laughs> just right, mother. <laughs> Shroom show. Sorry, I was late, guys. Sorry, I was late. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here now, my bad. Traffic was bad at the I last got a memo time from one eight hundred God. So I just decided to show up. Shows up and he's like, "Sorry, the last guy ran over a bit." Dude, my slack has been so backed up. I just. <laughs> forgot to get back to you my chariot got a blown ch- wheel on it had to get over here oh and dude uh hard segue but um the the new years so you set off for the what were they called big daddies yeah i went to uh i went to uh the fireworks store and or the tent whatever and they were like well can i help you because i was looking around and i was like i want the thing that's going to piss off all my neighbors with dogs like, what can I have with that? Them whistling memes. And they were like, <laughs> okay. And I was like, I need, like, post 1 a.m., everyone's woken back up. Mm. And they were like, okay, uh, probably that one over there. It's called Big Daddy. <laughs> and I was like, that sounds like the direction I need to go. <laughs> and I get over there, and it's like, you know, it says loudest, 60, basically the most legal you can go without having to go to the Georgia line. Right. The biome. And, uh. Sure enough, we launched that thing. That thing was crazy. <laughs> well, 
boom, and, and it, it had a short run too. When it when they launched, it it didn't get a couple <laughs> times. The they went and shot right down to the ground after it exploded up there. It came back down. Well, that's a little scary. That's a right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wanted. Yeah, sure when enough. I when I saw that video, I was laughing so hard. The what was it, <laughs> Leonard Skinner in the background on your <laughs> ring system? I gotta download that and post it. That thing was great. It scared both of us too. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> it was like, oh man. It was so funny too. We uh my neighbors brought their fireworks over. And we were lighting them off in our yard, and I noticed we were we were spinning through uh, the fireworks a little too fast, right? So we get to about ten fifteen, and I asked my neighbor, I was like, "Anyone in your family sober?" And he was like, "Well, my wife's sober, and she could drive." And I was like, "I need I need to make a run to the fireworks store." So we <laughs> made a run at ten thirty to the fireworks tent again. I bought another pack of those <laughs> big daddies. I got about two hundred dollars worth of fireworks just to keep launching them. <laughs> Is anyone sober? I showed him that ten. I was like, I need some more. <laughs> yeah. Please, I mean, that's, that's an ideal circumstance for them. That that's what they want. Oh yeah, for sure. It, it, they were. It was kind of interesting too. They were like sleeping in that tent. It was a. Uh, Husband and wife do it with their kid. Like right behind the cash register was obviously their bed set up. They just mm. pulled the tarps down on the side of the tent. I was like, Are y'all making good money on this? They were like, You asked me two days ago. I would have said no, but they've sold out of a ton of their stuff within the past two days of fireworks. Uh, up yeah, to New Year's Eve. I had a friend that had a family business selling fireworks. And um, that's back when we were all making really good money doing direct sales. And we were like, Hey, man, why are you doing that? And I mean, it, it shaked out like they made i think like seven or eight grand um like he made seven or eight grand and i think like three days but for those three days he said he was being worked like a mule chris christy had a someone in her and when she was getting her masters the group project i guess they had to pick a company to do or something like to make money and one of the guys in it they they picked selling fireworks he goes if you can find a good spot Mm -hmm. and you do it and you can like do it over multiple years like we have he goes i make two hundred thousand for fourth of july Damn. within a week span that's wild yeah he goes you got to get like a good spot you know you go there every year and you set it up so everyone knows to come back to your spot yeah, well obviously they're buying the inventory up front too right yeah. so do they just store what's left over or how does that work I'm wondering if they have a, a sell back. Like you can sell us back if you buy a hundred thousand, you can sell back ten thousand to us. You know, sure. something like that. I wonder yeah. if they have that. If not, how long are fireworks good for? Like, what's the shelf life? I have no clue. I, mean, I, I have three year old fireworks in my garage, so I'm I could find assuming, out. I'm assuming since black powder. I mean, whenever anyone finds an old World War II bomb and stuff, they're always careful with it. So black powder lasts as long as you needed to. As long as it stays dry. Yeah, I guess it's the wicks you really worry about the most. Yeah. Spotty wicks are not fun for anyone. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You're... I just... Man, I wanted to... It just reminded me of setting off fireworks on mushrooms in Tennessee. What was that? Barely legal? That one that we got? Barely legals. I didn't Barely know that legals. mortars are legal in Florida now. How long yeah, that well, I mean, they're not super big ones, but they're they get you excited for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> so. What they're doing is they're saying, "Hey, to drive extra adrenaline, we can't make them bigger, so let's just make them go off sooner." Maybe I mean it went, it gets out of the way, but it it definitely like wasn't as high as the ones we were shooting off. I think they just make them louder. I don't like if there's a way to make them louder. I don't I think that's what they do, because the ones we were shooting off in Tennessee had a way bigger. The ones in Tennessee were wild. Yeah, I just remember we showed up in the middle of COVID in Tennessee. <laughs> Those ladies saw four dude, young dudes showing up to buy fireworks. They were like the lottery. Hell yeah. <laughs> this is this is what we need right now. Her her only tooth almost fell out. She's so excited. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was that was a good time. But yeah, I would. I mean, you can't beat the Georgia line driving up to the Georgia line though and getting some fireworks at that stand right there or the Alabama line. Yeah, I'm so used to driving to Alabama that I forgot you can drive to Georgia and get them too. And it's kind of odd. Like, I mean, if you're going to set up an operation to sell narcotics, you probably would want to do it in a fireworks stand right there on the state line. Yeah. You're already like the cops, like it, what's okay. So if you, if you were to go to Alabama and buy a bunch of fireworks and then bring them into Florida and you got stopped for a ticket or whatever, got your car searched, um, can, can they cite you for that? Or is it no, setting you them can, off? No, they, it's just selling them. Just selling them. Just selling them. You can own them. You just can't sell them. Yeah. So kind of like children. <laughs> right? I mean, Shout tell out me Jeffrey what... Epstein's list came out, coming out. <laughs> yeah, oh, RFK is on that too. Well, that was the, uh, what was it? The flight dialogues or the whatever it's called. The documents came out. The list is now pushed out to the 22nd because someone on that list asked for it to be pushed out and it got approved. But just the documents from the court records got put out. Yeah, it was like 150 something out of like 2000. Yeah, that's going to be a good time. I mean, I think his saving grace there is that Stephen Hawking is also on the list. So unless. (laughs) Well, he said it was from. Going like him and his wife and kids were they took a flight for Easter or something. It was like a thirty minute yeah, flight. Yeah, I saw it. Was, you know, very yeah, not a big deal kind of thing. But then, then you kind of have to visually go in your mind to a place where Stephen Hawking is a monster and couldn't participate. Well, he had children too, didn't he? He cheated on his wife. Oh, it came out though that Stephen Hawking had like an orgy on the island. Really, <laughs> with underage girls. Yeah. No. <laughs> How did that come out? What are you talking about? Is the this records, one of those Meat Canyon things? No, look it up. It's in the records. What? L- look it up. I'm not going to go into detail on it, but yeah, look it up. In, no in the shot. Course. Are you serious? Yeah. That's wild. Oh, okay. So I didn't. I didn't want to know that. Honestly, that's something I. I definitely could have gone without. But I guess there's a whole bunch of folks on there that are pretty pretty bad people. In 2015, Epstein offered to pay people to disprove an allegation that Hawking was an under was in an underage orgy. To disprove? He was yeah. He was looking oh, for was, someone to, to help it, disprove that he was in this. Yeah. He was meaning finding some, he wasn't there. Well, he was looking for someone to help disprove that, which means he probably was there and he's paying to someone to help disprove that. Mm, I could see how you get there, but I think maybe there's a sliver of hope there that he's just not trying to be a gross human being. And was just look, trying to look for some black holes and stuff, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, how's uh, your New Year's going? <laughs> Great. Doing good. Hang it in there. Yeah. Yeah. I can like Epstein. Mmm, God. <laughs> Dog. Uh. <laughs> Whatever happened to Maxwell? She locked up forever? She's in the Florida State prison up in Tallahassee. How long? Hopefully forever. I don't know. Yeah. She's trying to just get out. Prove her innocence. Yeah, what a terrible, terrible person. I can't imagine that. I don't know. Like it's it's kind Let's of get her on the podcast. <laughs> mm, hard pass on that one. Hard pass on that one. <laughs> Although there is something like if you're being honest with yourself, there is something that'd be interesting about having Bill Clinton on the podcast. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, I don't know why, but it's like. Such an interesting juxt- juxtaposition. Is that, is that the right word? I just want to come at him come in and play that sax. He's somewhere between this odd fit of a dominant male figure and a, and a bottom, you know? So, like, he clearly was a bottom in the relationship with Epstein. And, then, and his wife. 
but yeah, uh, I mean, he was he was running side pieces pretty hard from what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, so. he, she probably doesn't have a picture of him in a dress. Or what are you mantle. gonna do? Divorce me? What are you gonna do? Divorce the president? <laughs> And you ain't going to be a senator for long if you do that. Who would you say, like, all right, top of mind, you get one one person on the podcast. Who's that person? Dead or alive? Dead or alive? Mm Mm-hmm. George Washington. Solid. With teeth or without? I don't care. Whatever, Whatever he's feeling that day. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. The more I hear about how hard Corey was with the slaves, the more it does take away from my image of him. I'm going to go Julius Caesar. Ooh, that's a solid one. You know? Um, Assuming that we have a conversation that I would never be able to recant because of the Library of Alexandria being burned down. So you can't come out of that conversation with information like, Oh no, that thing in Egypt really is 10,000 years old or 15,000 years old. You can't know that. But I would mm-hmm. imagine, even aside from that, yeah, I'd just be like, hey, dude, what was it like being a version of Hitler and Jesus? What was that like? He just comes on and he goes, I'll kill you both. <laughs> Joke's on like, you. You're already dead. <laughs> He goes, I could kill you both and then do whatever I want. Yeah. I wonder if aliens are just checking us out, you know, like looking down at Earth and we're kind of their Epstein Island. I I feel like Earth is probably more like, you know how you there's a town is probably really great. But then there's like a section where all the homeless people hang out and you just kind of don't go over there. But, you know, it's there. That's probably like what we're like in the universe. You're like, yeah, I mean, cool place to visit. Just don't go in that little section. You'll be, you'll be good. Do you ever um, think about like how cool it would be to be born a couple hundred years from now? Sometimes. Like I took that hesitation as a no. I mean, that, that felt like a pretty glaring no to me, but. I don't think about it a lot. I've thought about it, but it's so hard to think about that when I could think. But when you think about how far we've come in the last hundred years, you're like, dang, like how far, where's the progress going to be at that time? I remember actually, we did a podcast episode towards the beginning and we were talking about technology or something. Mm -hmm. And it was this, um, this conversation of like, Technology kind of like the internet, <clears throat> big boom, right? And then things just kind of petered after the iPhone, like a touch screen enabled thing. And it was yeah. just kind of like like the iPhone 15. When I went to the Apple store, I was really looking for a reason to trade in my phone for the of the 12, I think. And I'm like, what's different about it? And the guy couldn't, he was like, your battery's gonna last longer, better camera. Doesn't do anything else like cool, new, different, right? What yeah. do you think about AI and how much of a breakthrough technology that is? Like, that is the new internet. I feel like it's a new internet, though. So I feel the iPhone, I think, was was sold and marketed to the consumer. And it was a big change. A lot of stuff prior to the iPhone, a big market to the consumer and a development for the consumer. I feel like AI was more has been more dominated and progressive and marketed to corporations. I think like use we, case, yeah. We can well, use they're, they're it. They're just trying to figure out where it sure. went, right? Like, so OpenAI was kind of running out of funding. And the reason they released it, because there was a ton of people that were like, this is too dangerous to release. But they were basically running out of funding. So they're like, hey, in a last-ditch mm. effort, because it costs money to run those servers. So they were like, let's just throw it out there and see what the public's reaction is. Mm-hmm. And... The consumer ended up kind of fueling, I think, the corporate interest in this case, because then they're like, oh, hey, this is something that we can use for all kinds of different utilities. But there's also they've also been doing a lot of studies with AI prior to that, like the Google is I mean, there's all the talks that Google already has a sentient 
AI system, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we heard studies on that. So they've been doing this for years. And I think that's like, it wasn't marketed to us until very recently. Right. Now, well, now, now remember like the Google appointment booking thing? Do you remember that commercial when it was like the Google booking assistant and it could call a restaurant for you and make a reservation yeah. for you? Yeah. Like that, that was, I think that was uh, a couple years ago at this point. So mm -hmm. they've, they've been working on similar technologies. I don't know if you've used BART, their, uh, their chat GBT version. It's still not as good, but you would imagine with the resources behind them, that they'll, they'll have an extremely competitive product within a year. The most I've used AI was for creating a medieval Facebook yard sale post and uh, to help with writing best man speeches. Fair enough. Yeah. That's about, that's about as much as I've used them for. Do you still have the pin from your wedding? Mm hmm. That James gave you? Still got it. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to that pen. I can't believe yeah. you saved that sucker. I know. I'd bring so many of those home, too, because you have them in your pockets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just from working. Yeah. Um, that thing almost made me cry. I was like, I can't believe you saved that pen. Well, it made you cry, bitch, because you I, made me cry. Once I saw you was, crack like an egg, I was still. <laughs> that was so awesome. Good speech, too. Great speech. Um, what, were we, what were we talking about before that with the AI thing, though? Um. Oh yeah, I have a friend that he uh, he uses AI to apply for jobs for him. He now get this, he has three jobs now because he's in mm -hmm. like project management and tech, and uh, he just built out a workflow and it does the applying, the screening, just kind of gets it to a point where then it's like okay. Here's kind of uh, a scheduled opportunity appointment. And he's just fielding that. And he's using that to increase his pay. So it's just hmm. in the background, it's applying to like two to 300 jobs a week for him. I feel like, so something I've been thinking of on that, I don't want to go too dark because I think it's probably be a pretty boring to talk about, but it's been the talk lately of like if jumping from corporation to corporation to raise your pay, right? Boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom. And that's been the talk. Yeah. Um, something I noticed from my previous company is that there was high overturn. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it was high overturn because no one really knew what they were doing. But mm -hmm. they were doing that and they were bouncing job to job and getting the raises. Yeah. And I feel like the, it, it like goes here, 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 and then they fall off. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen people do that, do, do, do. And then they get to a certain point where they can't really bullshit anymore. Sure of knowing it and then it falls off and i feel like it works for a little while but you can't go too high with it like i feel like you can bounce yeah. for a little bit well these are can't... kind of two different use cases too right like yeah i think if you're doing something like he's doing in project management where you can systemize a lot of the stuff like a lot of the fluff of having yes. a meeting for a meeting sake versus you're a manager like a sales manager and you use leveraged opportunities and now, all of a sudden, you're in charge of a bunch of blue chip sales reps who can sniff out your bullshit really quickly. Mm -hmm. Then, and you're not performing, you're not helping growth, anything like that. Um, that's where I think you get bit by kind of like working the system a little bit yeah. too much. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I've just been noticing that for, you know, you see all these people like, oh, don't, corporations don't give a shit. And I'm like, they give a shit if you're doing well for them. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you stop doing well, of course they're not going to give a shit. That's a, it's a business, it's a company. But if you're not pre providing value, you're going to fall off, and they're not going to like you, and they're going to let you go. Don't you can't if a corporation is not liking you, you have to realize it's because you're not providing any more value to the company. What I find odd that I think AI is going to shake up for some people. I don't want to say a ton of people, but there's kind of like this energy in the corporate environment, like no doubt about it. The school system does an amazing job at turning out people that are just like worker bees. Just like, sure. hey, this is kind of, and I've, I've felt this encroaching. I'm speaking to this because I've felt it in my own life in the last couple of years where at a certain point, you're not looking to do risky shit anymore. You're like, I got kids. I have a stable life with my wife or my partner, et cetera. 
I'm not trying to shake the jar. Like I just don't, I don't want to be crippling unhappy. I want to be comfortable. And Mm -hmm. so what's weird to me about that is that there's more than ever a ton of opportunity to make a ton of money. And I think AI will give people a lot of opportunities to be more efficient and make more income and not really have an excuse as to far like why they can't pursue something because there won't be as much barriers from like education intelligence like you can kind of outsource a lot of that which is like a little bit of creativity a little bit of thinking outside the box or pursuing what you want to go after so i'm curious to see how it impacts corporate people if you if you know how to i think you need to know how to do some systems first in order to use ai creatively in order to outsource it properly you don't know now for sure if you don't know how to yeah, like you, in order to outsource certain things, you kind of need to know how that thing works a little bit mm-hmm. to understand what you want out of the outsourcing product yeah. and to be able to feel it. Like, I mean, we've kind of learned that through this step of the process of, of going through and finding editors, right? Right. Like in the beginning, we kind of didn't know. We're just kind of like, we kind of have an image of what we're looking for. And this is, and then we shared it and we get something back. Yeah. And it seems like as we narrowed down what we wanted and we got better and we even started editing ourselves for a little bit and we're like oh okay like this is how much it entails this is what it involves this is more of the cycle thing we're looking for we were able to outsource it a lot better and we, we've gotten better with our editors each time mm-hmm. shout out editors that's so that'd be a great example right like let's say someone's always wanted to produce a podcast like right now there's software that will take clips for you and say they're like hey we'll make viral content it's content i wouldn't say it's like viral quality but as these um language learning models progress i i think in a couple of years like you definitely will be able to put a long form video into an ai and it produce very high quality short form content and and that would be an example of eliminating a barrier instead of having to go through the anguish of figuring out how to delegate, communicate to somebody what you want. You're just adjusting little settings in a software that doesn't have feelings. So you can be like, this fucking sucks. You know, you could probably tell the AI, this fucking sucks. And it's like, sorry about that. Let me try this approach. And it's like, yeah, actually, that's good. Good job, computer. <laughs> I saw I saw a hilarious meme that talked about, hey, um, It said, hey, uh, AI, create an image of a bowl of ramen, right? And the bowl of ramen came up, and next to the ramen was two chopsticks. And then the the guy was like, all right, um, AI, get rid of the the chopsticks. And the AI said, like, sorry, I can't can't visualize the image to know what you're talking about. And the guy's like, the two stick things next to the ramen, get rid of those. And the AI is like, sorry, I can't visualize what you're talking about and the ai goes all right create a bowl of ramen without chopsticks okay and it creates a bowl of ramen and then it has like chopsticks and then like another half chopstick sticking out of the (laughs) bowl of ramen and he's like you added the chopsticks and he goes okay get rid of the chopsticks he's like sorry i don't know what you're talking about and he goes ai create a image of chopsticks and it creates images of chopsticks. And it goes, all right, AI, create a bowl of ramen without the chopsticks in there. And it creates it with chopsticks. And he's like, damn it. And it just goes to show, like, AI is just pulling images from the internet. But no one's ever created a bowl of ramen without chopsticks. Everyone has chopsticks in an image they've right. created with a bowl of ramen. <laughs> well, there's, it's, so that's the part that's where, where, like, some of the creators that have listened to, um, on podcasts and stuff they're they're talking about the way the ai is getting to the result isn't the way that we would get to the result Mm-mm. so like they fed it a bunch of eyeballs and they're like tell us um you know tell us if if this eyeball is a male eyeball or a female and you know at the end of that it was like 99.7 percent of the time it got it right or something like that right and then so they're like, why is it getting it wrong? Because that was way higher than any human would do. And um, when they looked at the the reasoning that the AI was feeding back to itself, it was making connections that we wouldn't have seen. So by that logic, like it's not learning 
the images the way we would describe the images. It's just making inferences from searches and all these other buckets and categories. So mm-hmm. it still needs training of how these dumb monkeys wanted to do things. Yeah. yeah I, 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 it's scouring in the internet and I'm like, how is the FBI and CAA blocking the AI from reaching their systems? I wonder. You know? I would imagine that there are a lot of resources being dumped because it's one of those things, if you think about it too much, it'd probably freak you out. But like the iterations of this technology are extremely powerful. Mm-hmm. Like there's just no, no way, no world where it doesn't like chat. I think it was chat GBT. I was listening on the way back from Florida. Um, these biologists uh i don't remember what what exactly they were studying yeah there's these biologists and they were looking for um some molecules for something and they were like i wonder what we could tell us to do nefariously like they were trying to come up with uh certain certain type of research chemicals and so they they asked it to put together a list of um poisonous gases and it came up with like 10,000 and some of them were like mustard gas and like really, really intense stuff and a ton of stuff that had never been discovered. So they present, they got this stuff together. They got a hold of some government agencies and they were like, Hey, did you know that this can do that? And so they ended up giving like a TED talk at the Geneva convention or a TED talk or meeting at the Geneva convention, something like that and freaking Geneva out talk. all these politicians. And then they got invited to the White House. And so the White House was like, okay, yeah, this is freaking us out. Like, what systems were you running? What servers were this on? And they were like, a a MacBook? Like, that's all. (laughs) And so they couldn't believe that, like, and this is already when ChatGBT4 had come out. Yeah. So this is like, hey, we're using the old school stuff, and this is putting all this together. And it's not specifically trained on how to do this. It just put it together. Let's even switch that over to uh, a business, right? Like if I had money to waste, it'd be awesome to be like to start a weed dispensary and just from the point of how, like how to start a weed dispensary through chat GTBT, chat GBT and follow the entire process through whatever it says to do and just be like, let's just see what happens, right? From the marketing, how to grow it how to pick it. I mean, everything, like whatever it tells me to do, I'm going, this is my boss basically. Mm -hmm. And then just carry that over and just see how well the dispensary does. There was a guy that did that with t-shirts. He made a couple grand a month and just, he just like, he asked uh, the GBT, he was like, I have a thousand dollars to start a business. What should I do with it? And then it presented all these different business ideas. And he just asked it prompts to narrow down you know, the different businesses and what's going to be the most viable. And it, so he's just kind of taking what it's giving, feeding it back. And he's like, okay, so what should I do from that? What should I do from that? Mm -hmm. So it walked him all the way through setting up a Shopify, setting up integrations, print on demand, how to optimize the advertising, et cetera, et cetera. And he built a essentially passive income from print on demand t-shirts and it was profitable in the first month, a couple grand. Yeah. People be like, what's a profitable business? Custom fleshlights. Get it out there. Yeah, but that, that's custom, you know? Then you got to have somebody handling process. the dicks. It'd be a fun pro. They don't have that. You, they send Are the mold. fleshlights dicks? No, they're, they're fleshlights, so they're not. They're vaginas. They're vaginas. Yeah, okay. But no, you send, a, you send like something, the mold. You get in there, you make your shape, you send it back. They make the, make the custom for you. I'm sure there's a company. Oh, that I see does what you that, mean. Though. Yeah, oh, for sure. Flashlight. Yeah. Got to be. Flashlight's got it. That's probably got to be their premium product. Are there competitors to Flashlight? I'm sure there is. I'm sure is. there is. Japan's got to be up yeah. there. They got a problem with that over there, don't they? People Huge. using stuff too much. Well, it's because there's more men than, than women over there, I'm pretty sure, like in that air- territory. Yeah. What do you think about like testosterone levels dropping? What do you think that's from? It's all the fluoride, man. Yeah, yeah that's probably right. is, though. I don't know. It's probably got a lot to do with our water because we keep recirculating the water with tons of stuff. And a lot of people have been saying uh, the birth control stuff because mm-hmm. so many women are taking it 
and it gets flushed through the piss down to the toilet system. And the stuff that's in the birth control doesn't get taken out when it gets processed through the water treatment system. So it gets right back into us and then all the men are drinking it. And it's, I think that's what, I think it was the birth control or it was something else similar to that. And it's lowering men's testosterone through the water drinking. I guess it's kind of like autism. Them trying to they figure say it's out, a lot like, heavier in, in cities where the water treatment facilities are. Lower levels of testosterone. That that that's happening. Yeah, it's not happening mm. out in the the country where you're pulling the water out of the. the uh, yeah, another win for for the red states. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it pays to be a redneck. All right, every now and then. I you saw know? a good old boy on uh, the TikTok the other day. He goes, y'all talking about raising. Raising a uh, living cost and whatnot. He's like, don't take that much. Live out here in the country. What's more, you know, my double wide, four eighty six a month. How much my cut truck costs? One eighty a month. He says, shoot, I can go down to Pig Wiggly, and I can get a grocery for about fifty bucks. He's like, I'm all in it for six hundred a month. I don't know what everybody's complaining about. You just need to be out there with. I don't know. You get the idea. Um, one tornado true. though, you're fucked. <laughs> I think you're fucked in a house too, buddy. <laughs> no, not a, not as bad in a house. Not as double bad. wide. As, you get the uh, I don't know F three. Sure, you're probably no screwed. one's complaining about flooding in a in a trailer. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Your propane tank might float away. That's, That's true. You might get a, but Johnny sells them up the road though. He'll be all right. <laughs> I know, boy. Shoot, I know, boy. It's tank fell rusty. off the old truck. It's a little rusty, a little bumpy. That's all right. I remember when we lived in a double wide, we had a giant propane tank. I hadn't. I used to go and knock on that thing. Just kid being a kid, you know? God, we should get on the podcast, like, we should have a range. We should get, like, one guy that does, like, you know those four-by-four four shops? Mm-hmm. They just create four-by-four. Four. They fix them up and do it. We get, like, a good one of that, and then we get, like, so your brother. Text- so we get yes, and then we get like or like a and then we get like a text CEO. We get that guy one week and we get the other one the next week. It just I still want to have on a, a person from the pharmaceutical industry. I don't think it's the pharmaceutical industry, like uh big pharma in psychedelics. I want to have someone on from like big pharma that's pursuing a uh I'm gonna throw the word out there, it's the wrong word, clandestine version of mushrooms. Well, we got and, Dr. Garcia coming on. He's a psychologist. And, uh, but he's, he's not being paid off, week. is he? No, he's not being paid off. I want off, someone but... deep in the pocket. Oh, you of... want someone getting the, the good treatments. No, I like, want someone that's like advocating for $4,000 mushroom trips and like how their little pill is so much better. And then I want to have on one of the people from like the base daters where it's like de- decriminalize everything, you know, power to the people kind of thing. I want to have them on where we can kind of sit back and do our own little version of celebrity death match and just watch them go at each other. Be like, Oh, I kind of agree with them on that. So we got yeah. a debate. We just do a debate on the podcast. That'd be kind of cool. We get a nice debate going mm-hmm. on the podcast. Do you think it's better virtually or in person? Cause I feel like in person adds this like Sean, I say qual in person, obviously, but I think just the way we've set this podcast up probably would work better virtually at the moment. Yeah. When you move um, back, we could do in person. Definitely. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. I'm excited for this year. We got good guests lined up. That's going to be. Yeah, yeah next time. couple of weeks, folks. Because uh, I, I feel as if, uh, hey, we're approaching our taxiway. Wrong term. Runway. Oh, just to mention it, because I know some people follow my bathroom project right now through my podcast. As I mentioned before to you. That company's currently, and I know they don't listen to this podcast, so I don't care. <laughs> that company probably is going to get a class action soon against them of how badly they've been. And I found out through most of the people in the neighborhood, they've also been having problems. So That's why it Should doesn't be. pay to go with the good guys. This was supposedly the good guys. Exactly. This is and why I you got go to Home Depot screwed. and shop around in the parking lot. For real, though. Like, I have been <laughs> that close a couple times. <laughs> solid working guys i mean dude that's where they're getting a lot of their workers anyway we did it when we flipped your your yard yeah back. they did great i don't think they could believe how hard we were working but they 
Because how many times do you think those guys get hired and then the people go inside their air conditioner not doing jack? And we get there and we're shoveling and then they're oh, like... I had one dude that was like, dude, anytime you need anything. He's like, I think this is the first job I've ever done. I didn't get screamed at and talked down to. He's like, I <laughs> am down to do whatever you need me yeah. to do. Um, I think those guys were surprised. We were working harder than they were. <laughs> they were just like, dang, these guys are out here doing it. Oh, yeah, it. especially when Joe pulled that pipe thing out of the ground. I was like, dude, I'll get down there. If anybody's getting their arm snapped, I'll get my arm snapped. Just, it's cool. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have health insurance on the Home Depot plan here. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll get in the hole. <laughs> I'll get in the hole. Don't you worry, buddy. It's um, all right. But yeah, yeah. So, uh, <coughs> next week, uh, we have a, a awesome guest. The week after that, another awesome guest. I mean, for the rest of the month, we got some really, really star studded lineups for you guys. Um, and also, hey, if you got any ideas on what you would like to hear in a book, send mm-hmm. them our way. Um, the YouTube comments like to let us know their thoughts in long form, uh, short form. You're more than welcome to tap us on Instagram or TikTok. However you choose to engage. <laughs> I need to get better it. at replying to those guys. I hate reading comments. Well, I hate reading comments on my own stuff. I don't mind reading them on their stuff. But I need, <laughs> if it's my yeah, own stuff, I'm like, I don't want to look at the that's sure. criticism okay well hey we love you guys and uh if you want to see more of us just subscribe and other than that we'll see you next love week you guys Bye.